chapter 67, solving quadratic equations using the square root property. The basics. We learned how to solve x squared minus 25, which is 0 earlier. We factored the left side, impossible, and in this case it is possible, and set each factor to 0. So we have x squared minus 25, a squared minus b squared, which is a plus b times a minus b, which is 0. So either this factor is 0, which means x is negative 5, or x minus 5 is 0, which means x is positive 5. That's by factoring. Now, we could have approached the solution of x squared minus 25 by using the square root property. The technique involves taking roots, square roots, of both sides of an equation. So you start out with x squared, which is 25. You take the square root of the left side, you get x. You take the square root of the right side, which is 5. Since x is a variable, x can be positive 5 or negative 5. I'm not saying the square root of 25 is negative 5. But I'm saying x can be the opposite of the square root of 25. So x can be plus or minus 5. Some examples. Example 1. You wanted to solve x squared plus 3x minus 10, which is equal to 0 by the square root property except that I have been doing factoring here, so I'm not doing the square root property here, I'm doing factoring. I factor this as x minus 5 times x plus 2, which means x is positive 5, or x is negative 2. Not the square root property yet. And uh, again, I am not using the square root property that comes in the next uh, uh, chapter. So I'm a little bit ahead of me with what I'm telling you about. I need to factor this. Oh, and then, yeah. I need to factor this. So note you have a perfect square here, 2x quantity square. You have a perfect square here, 5 squared. Could the middle term be the double product? So 2 times 2x times 5, that's 10, 20. Yes, it is. This is in the form of a squared minus, a B, minus 2ab plus b squared, which we learned is a minus b quantity squared. a squared plus 2ab b squared is a minus b quantity squared. Take the square root of both sides. Uh, you get just uh, this 2x minus 5, which is 0. Okay, the square root of quantity squared is just the quantity. Add 5 to both sides, divide by 2. You get x, which is 5 over 2. I'm showing you the square root property. You may not quite catch on what it means yet. Here, if you have x squared plus 9, which is 0, you uh, subtract 9 from both sides. You take the square root of both sides. That's a square root property. So you get the square root of x squared, which is x, the square root of negative, nine, negative 3, negative 9, which is uh, not negative 3 because x squared cannot be a negative number in the real number system. So I wish I had made that a square root of 9. I'll go back and not change that. And we see in this particular case, we don't get a real number. Example 4. I have x over 2 over 3, which is equal to 3 over x. I'll cross multiply, that gives me x squared over 4, which is equal to 9, right over here, which I can rewrite as x over 2 squared, which is 3 squared. I take the square root of the left, which is just x plus 2, the square root of the right, which is plus or minus, because I have a variable here, plus or minus 3. And then I multiply by 2, so x is plus or minus 6. Square root property, you take the square root on the left, you take the square root on the right. And if there's a variable here, don't forget the plus or minus. Example 5. That is the real square root property that I want to show you. You have quantity square, which is quantity square. Take the square root of the left, you just get x plus 9. Take the square root of the right, you get 5. Don't forget plus or minus. Subtract 9 from both sides. Your answer is x minus 9 plus or minus square root of 5. Both of these are answers here. Both of these are solutions. 
if you want to, you can add 9, and you get x, which is, uh, I said you can add 9. So that should be 9 plus square root of 5, which is positive square root of 14. Or, or, or subtract. Uh, no, you don't add 9. This is the root. You have negative 9 plus 5, which is negative 4, or you get negative 9 minus 5, which is negative 14. Okay. I take care of the plus or minus. I work the plus by itself, the minus by itself, so I get a minus 4 and the negative 14 for x. And both of these numbers should work when you plug them in. Usually the video is not that long. I didn't realize I had that many examples, otherwise I would have broken it up. This example here, add 121 to both sides. Realize that 121 is 11 square. You take the square root. You have 7 times quantity, which you square. Out of the square root, that becomes a 7. Quantity squared is just quantity. And then divide by 7. Don't forget the plus or minus. Subtract 9 from both sides. This is your solution without needing to factor. Okay, so I'm showing you that both of these are fractions. And then I want you to do some exercises.